All right, let us talk about the dreaded banked curve. The idea here is that we have a car um, going around a circle like this, but the path it's on is tilted at some angle theta. And so there may or may, it's going in a circle, so there's definitely going to be some issue of centripetal forces. There may or may not be friction, so we may have to worry about a frictional force. Um, the car may have some weight, most of them do, so we got to worry about gravity. There's a surface involved, so there's a normal force. And we're probably going to have to deal something with some kind of rotated, possibly, coordinate system. So this gets kind of messy. First, though, let us consider a boring curve. A boring curve is one which is not banked. So it is just a car on a flat road, um, but it's still coming at you. So somewhere over here is the center of the path. So in this case, going around a circle, so we definitely have some centripetal acceleration, which means that there is some centripetal force required, which we remember is mv squared over r. Whenever we have a situation where we're going in a circle, the question we always have to ask, what is supplying the centripetal force? Centripetal force is, that's what, it's a value that the net force has to have because this is the acceleration the car has to have. So it's a statement about the net force. It's not a statement about whatever is supplying it. The centripetal force is not a physical force. Just like say it to yourself three times before you go to bed while we're in chapter six. It'll sink in, I swear, maybe, could, possibly. All right, looking at the car, is anything pulling the car towards the center? As I've drawn it, um, the answer is simply no. So then we have to have the brilliant idea that there is friction. So if a car is going around a curve like this, here's my car, then the friction force acting on the car must be in this direction. Weird, right? Right. So, we know that in the x direction, so or I guess here's my car, Let's step back a second, here's my car, my car is coming out of the I'm gesturing with my pen as though that's helpful. Coming out of the computer screen, it's coming at your face. Um, so the car is here, going to the right, uh, which means that the center is this way, which means that there must be a force acting on it this way, and we're going to claim that as friction, because there's no other possible candidate. And so we have our, our weight, we have our normal force also. So in the x direction, we have the net force is the friction force, which is F net. Let's actually, just so this makes a little more sense. This is F net, which is the friction force, which must be equal to the centripetal force. We have in the y direction, normal force going up, gravity going down, which must be equal to zero because the car is not floating up into the air or something weird like that. So this is true, and then over here we get something like mu fn is equal to mv squared over r, or mu mg is equal to mv squared over r, or mu is equal to mv squared over rg. Side story, if you drive on a slippery road, what do you think is going to happen? What kind of things do you have to do? Well, usually the advice is to take either bigger turns or drive slower. And why is that? Well, because if you have a wet road, this is reduced. Mu gets dragged down, which means that the friction force is reduced which means that the maximum velocity you can drive at is reduced and the minimum curva radius of curvature is reduced. So in order to accommodate this, these things need to go down or up, respectively, depending on the top of the bottom. Anyway, true story. So let's go back to the banked curve. In the banked curve, we again, and car is gonna be replaced by a box, labeled car. A situation like this, the car is now tilted which is really going to make this awkward. So now we have 
our normal force going up like this. We have our gravitational force going like this. You notice one of the perks here is that this would allow us to reduce friction because the center is now over this way. So we could have, this could work. We don't need friction in this case. Right? This is saying that we need uh, in the x direction. And even though it looks like this is a good thing for tilting, we're going to leave our axes like this. This will be positive x because I really like making left-handed coordinate systems even though they screw with people. So in the x direction, our net force, all that we have is the x component of the normal force, which has to equal our centripetal force. And in our y direction, we have the y component of the normal force minus gravity must still be equal to zero. So this isn't too, it's functionally very similar. In the x direction we're gonna have Oh dear, it's always this stuff with the triangles. Uh, looks like Fn sine theta is equal to mv squared over r. And in the y direction, we're going to have Fn cos theta is equal to mg. So, we'll do the wonderful trick we divide these by each other. Tan theta is equal to v squared by rg. I don't really know what the question was going to be asking at this case, but that's pretty much all the math we can do. They probably have to tell you theta, v, or r. And the idea being in this case, the weird tricky thing is that the center is horizontal. The, the center is horizontally away from this car. Because the, ca the car is going in a circle um, in this plane here. This is the plane of the of the path of the car. So the center of its path is somewhere you know over here at the center. That is why the cent it's not going in a path it's not going in a plane uh, not in this plane. If it were in that plane then the center would be down here. And so the center is not here. And that is kind of conceptually an annoying and confusing bit of this. Um, so the fact that the center is here, really annoying. Let us just for a second look at what this would be with, gra with friction. Uh, I'm not going to solve it all the way out, but we will just kind of consider it. So again, picture still looks something like this. Car coming out of the screen towards us. We now have normal force perpendicular to the surface, friction uh, parallel to the surface, and gravity going down. The center is somewhere in that general direction. So in the x direction we have, and we're still going to take um, this as our coordinate system, positive x, positive y. Um, the reason being because I know what the net forces in these directions should be. And otherwise it's complicated, which I should have said before too. You could do this aligned along the surface, but your accelerations are going to be weird. Because your acceleration is still towards the center, is still what appears to be horizontal. Um, so this looks like the x component of the normal force minus the x component of friction is going to be our centripetal force, and this is going to be, wow, i apparently going to spell fnet with a giant n to start, not sure what's up with that, that plus this minus the other thing still equals zero. Um, so the really tricky bit about this is that the friction force depends on the normal force, but the normal force kind of depends on the, like, Everything is a little tied up in this, although it winds up that, you know, it depends largely on the normal force. Because once we put in that F is equal to, you know, this is in terms of magnitudes, 
All of these are in terms of magnitudes because I've gone into the components. These are all vectors. Vectors, magnitudes. Anyway, uh, once you put this in, it might you know, it's the the really tricky part is that saying what the magnitude of the normal force is is non-trivial. Um, but it turns out if we do if we make the substitution, we basically get um, something like this: F n sine theta minus mu F n equals m v squared over r. That's x for us. And then y gets us something like this. Oh, and this should. Oh dear. Um, this needs a trig thing here. Uh, if this is theta, then oh yeah, that's easy. That's cos. Because f is just in this direction, so that's why I said it's easy. It's not. The, finding the angles for these things is really the most obnoxious part of any one of these problems. Um, the weird thing is that these switch, but that's because they're perpendicular to each other, so it actually sort of makes sense in a weird way. Um, if you look at this, every term on this side has fn, so you can factor it out of both sides and do the wonderful dividing trick. Dividing equations is civilization, basically. Okay, anyway, this is a nice, incredibly convoluted problem involving circular motion and friction. Um, it is one of the more intense mathematical examples of Newton's second law that you're going to write down. It has a lot of forces working in a lot of directions and has a specific acceleration, which is kind of conceptually interesting. Um, so this would be a good thing to work through to make sure that you can draw out your components and that all of these make sense. I realize this example, a similar example is this work in your book. This, I hopefully the narration helps a little bit. Um, but you want to go through this really line by line and make sure that you understand what is going on here. Hopefully it helps. See me if you have questions. Toodles.